Okay, Web Magic says we're live, so we're gonna go. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast. Oh shit, I didn't I didn't do the thing. I didn't do the thing, Kent. I didn't do the thing. Uh, welcome to the Richard Mosley Podcast, episode 142 for Thursday, the 21st of September, 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their ge- their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, and that's Kent. He's going to introduce our guests while I figure out what I'm doing with my life. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, well, at least it's not our Twitch debut. Uh, it's pretty, uh, th- that was a really good intro, Amos. Um, no, but we're, we aren't alone as usual. Uh, you can't see him yet in the video stream. However, we are here there with he is. Nick Britton. He is a best-selling author. He's a, a, a former soldier. He's a former uh, teacher. He's an entrepreneur. He's got all kinds of uh, cool stuff going on. What's going on, Nick? How are you guys? Thank you for having me. Uh, Kent, you forgot something, man. I, I, I believe I heard the rumor that he once traded his socks for a jacket. Um, because the dude needed some socks on a subway. I'm not sure, but it seems like he's that kind of guy that'd be like, you know what? Here, have the jacket and the socks. I'll just go barefoot uh, out the subway and uh, catch whatever diseases are on the ground. In the subway. <laughs> I've never been there, so I don't know. Is that a true story, Nick? No, no, I've never traded my socks on a subway. Unfortunately, there's not, there's no subways down here in Miami right now. So it's just lack of opportunity. Okay. That, I mean, that's fair. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's not it. that he it's wouldn't. Not that you wouldn't. It's just that you haven't had the chance. <laughs> that's it. Exactly. Oh man. Well, so, uh, definitely. Thank you. thank you for having me. I, I certainly appreciate your time. Hey, um, so, uh, usually we kick off, uh, the beginning of the show with a little bit of what we've been, what we've been doing this week. You've got maybe a little bit more going on than we do. How have you been this last week in uh, Southern Florida? Yes, we, uh, we had a little hurricane called Irma came and, uh, and did a, did a number on South Florida and the Caribbean. Um, it's crazy. I'm in Miami. There's millions of people in the city and there's still, um, there's still traffic lights out. It's absolutely insane. It's over 10, almost two weeks since the storm and there's still traffic lights out. It's, um, you know, I'm sure you guys know the second most popular language in South Florida is actually English with the first being Spanish. So nobody knows how to drive. It's, it's just crazy right now. Yeah, man, I don't envy you. Um, how are you, how are you looking for, uh, Maria? Is that going to cause any problems for you guys? I, I think it's going to shoot up the, uh, up the Atlantic, you know, uh, mess up Virginia and, and that area. Hopefully I, I don't want to say, is it bad to say, hopefully, I don't know. Um, but I, I hope it avoids South Florida. I think it's going to, that's what it looks like. So fingers crossed. It's okay to say, hopefully not here. That's, that's right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, best of luck hopefully with not here. best of luck with all of that, with the, the recovery and everything. I'm, I'm was happy to hear that your family was not, um, uh, you know, hurt or, or anything in, in that whole thing. So that's, that part's good. Uh, um, yes. Yeah, so everyone's safe. I, I have about o- over a hundred thousand dollars of damage, which, uh, which is a lot to kind of digest and bring in. But, uh, you know, it's, it is it's what happens when you're an entrepreneur, when you're a business owner, you take losses and you, you figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hey, um, Speaking of losses, uh, Diamond Club movie party was this weekend. <laughs> no, that was a net win, my friend. Uh, no, Diamond Club movie party. It's a one, once a month viewing party that we do. Uh, so much fun. Uh, Poodle Puncher and Sassian put that on. And as always, this weekend, it was a, a total blast. And I can't wait for the next one. Uh, speaking of Poodle Puncher, man, he issued a challenge to us. Okay, so last week we told you that DiamondClub.tv was going through some changes, that that should have been the last show on DiamondClub.tv. Turns out I don't think the show actually made it to DiamondClub.tv, um, but it made it to Twitch and YouTube. So Poodle Puncher was like, hey, why don't we make this a little competition about who can get Twitch affiliate first, since we're both like brand new, just starting out on Twitch because we were all holding out for the, uh, for the Diamond Club thing. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, down, dude. Yeah, let's go, man. Uh, Poodle Puncher, it's on, bro. Uh, so Poodle Puncher and and uh, a couple other guys host a show called The VOD Squad. Uh, it's all about video on demand, uh, 
devices and services and things. Um, it's a pretty cool show. Not as cool as RMP, of course. Um, but uh, I, I, mean, I encourage you guys to that, check him out. That show's a good little brother. A good <laughs> yeah. little brother to this show. Yeah, I encourage um, people to check it out just so, it, if for no other reason, just to see how much better Ritual Misery Podcast is. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Uh, stop by there. They're, they're uh, same time slot as us, just one day earlier, because they, uh, they, they try to front up on us like that. Um, but you watch their show, then you come here and you see how it's actually done. And, and man, it, you know, it's, it's just, uh, you know, just make that happen. Go by there. They're, they're, they'll be on Twitch as well. Um, I'm sure we'll have, a, have a, either a link show up in the, one of the chat rooms uh, very soon or... Uh, or uh, yeah, I think, or maybe just in the show notes. I don't know. I think we're uh, actually going to be hosting their stream as well, right? On our channel. We are. We are. Yeah. We've awesome. before he even issued the challenge, we we're already uh, hosting each other's streams. So right I don't on. know how Twitch works. I'm still trying to figure it out, <laughs> but I hear that's a good thing. I hear that's a good thing. Yeah, um, pretty cool. What? How was your week though? What, what did you have? So going on? we uh, we did some garage cleanup this weekend. Oh, that's some always. Cleanups fun. That, uh, I'm I'm sure Nick is used to cleaning it up by now. Um, <laughs> That we so so there's a door in the garage that goes into the kitchen. There's one that goes to the backyard, and there's of course the the vehicle door that, you know in the front of the garage. You couldn't go from the vehicle door to the front or to the back door. Like there was no path. You had to move something out of the way. There's like stuff in the way. There was a gate where you could either get you could get to any two doors, but not all three from the same. So we 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 literally pulled everything out of the garage. We built a floating shelf, um up you know, suspended from the roof because yeah. my wife likes to watch YouTube and she told me we're going to build this. And I said, okay, so we, we <laughs> built it. Um, I'm still hoping it doesn't fall down and crush my lawnmower, but, uh, but we did that. And that was pretty much the whole weekend, man. It took us two days to go through the crap. I've taken two truckloads of trash and recyclables from the specifically from the garage to the dump to get them either recycled or thrown away. Um, but now the garage is sweet, man. It's, it's, it's nice and semi-organized and we have more stuff than I ever thought we did sitting in the garage collecting dust. So yeah, there's more stuff to give away. We give a lot of stuff away too. There's, you know, you, know, you were talking a couple weeks ago that you throw something on Facebook and you don't put a price on it. Nobody wants it. Then you put 50 bucks on it. Now everybody wants, everybody in their son wants it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we just put it up there and some lady was like, I live an hour and a half way. I'm going to come pick it up right now. Holy cow. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, we're not going to charge you. It took you more than gas than we were going to make out of it anyway. So here you go. Right. Right. Wow. Um, but yeah, that was a that was a lot of fun and kind of exciting. It was it, it, it was it was sore work standing on a ladder for the majority of the day for one day. But whatever. Mm-hmm. It's fun sitting at Lowe's just buying random stuff and saying, "Oh, I think we'll need this and I think we'll need that." Yeah. So <laughs> hey, Nick, uh, we like talking about what kind of geeky stuff we get up to each week. Uh, are you much of a geek? Do you geek out on uh, anything in particular? Well, well, wait, wait, wait. he's asking the question wrong because everybody geeks out on something. <laughs> That's true. Whether, so whether what it's is tech more particular or geek? cars or what? So everybody geeks out on something. That's so. What is what is your geek? That's what we're asking. I um my big thing is books. I love reading. Um, old school too. Uh, you know, a book in my hand and going through it. Uh, in 2015, I made a decision. I wanted to read a book a week. And I actually, I failed at that goal. I read 50 books in that whole year. But um, at any given time, I'm, I'm reading a book and I kind of just, as much as I'm always on social media, I love to like just disappear in front of the ocean and, and read a book for hours upon time. Oh, that's, yeah, that, that's, that's not too bad. 50 books what, in a what year. Is, is uh, what's your impressive. favorite genre? Uh, nonfiction book. Uh, that's it. I, I can't trigger my imagination to do anything else but nonfiction. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and is for, for nonfiction, like, do you have a certain time period or a certain subject matter or whatever? No, probably, you know, any, any thought that any, anything that really gets me deep in thought and gets me thinking about the world. Um, I love, you know, some biographies as well can do the, can do the same thing, but for the most part, you know, if it, it makes me wonder, you know, am I really doing a good job in this life I'm living or is there something else I can do? I, I get, you know, I start writing and I, I get deep in those thoughts. So I guess that's kind of geeky, um, author, artsy kind of way. Um, besides, you know, being a big macho football player, I uh, I have that side of me. Very cool. Uh, yeah, that's no, that's awesome. And um, I, I enjoy a nonfiction book here and there, but I'm I'm much more uh, firmly rooted in the fiction world. Um, and 
in fact, uh, so Game of Thrones, the, the popular show on HBO, just wrapped up. And uh, we are, uh, I guess, in a drought of new stuff because George R. R. Martin has yet to release the new book. Uh, but we, it, it appears that we are going to be t- tided over somewhat with some new material. Uh, HBO announced that they are going to have the animated history of Westeros. Uh, which is kind of like a deep dive into the history of this fictional world. And uh, they put out a trailer for it. And Amos, did you have a chance to watch this? I did not. It I did looks not. Well, pretty I've, cool. I've seen part of several of these animated histories, but I haven't seen like this, this particular project. Yeah, it, it looks pretty cool. It's a, it, like I said, it's a, it's a deep dive into the lore and the history of the, of the place. And, um, Right now, they're saying it's going to be an exclusive, like with the DVD and Blu-ray release. Mm. Uh, but I'm sure that'll change at some point. Hopefully, we get that streaming somewhere uh, where I yeah. can take a look. Oh, I mean, we'll, we'll probably catch it on VOD Squad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We, we should have made that the game. How many times can we drop each other's name during the show? <laughs> I, think, I think we're at six. Right. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Oh boy. I think we're at six. <laughs> um, but yeah, so speaking of, of supporting one another, uh, there's a good way that, that uh, people that enjoy watching us can support us. If you head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery, uh, you can give a fuck, give a buck. Uh, let us know that you like what we're doing. Throw a buck at us. Uh, you can even cap that at, at a buck a month so that all you, mm. all you actually spend is a dollar. Kent, 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 Kent. So, do you realize how many of our of, of our people on Patreon they're they're not capping it at a dollar? Yeah, no, I know. We tell them to go on there, just do a dollar and just cap it at a dollar. <laughs> but they're not. They're 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 capping it at three dollars or five dollars. They're right. no cap at all. Like that's pretty awesome. Yeah, like I mean, they give a fuck, but not that much, right? They're not gonna. They don't. They don't. <laughs> they don't care so much about their dollar. They're just gonna cap it off at just one. So hey, if you just just cruise on by a, a, a patreon.com slash ritual misery and do what you got to do. And we, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge Kent right now to take on a project Ooh, okay. for exclusive for patrons, exclusively for patrons. And I'm going to leave it up to <laughs> poodle punch. says, wait, you can cap it. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it's, you're stuck with it, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to leave it up to chat realm. Um, chat realm. Okay. What, what project that could probably take about an hour a week. What project should Kent do? For ritual misery, exclusive for patrons. If you got an idea, throw it up in chat, and we'll, and and uh, I'm I'll challenge Kent to do it. So that that means basically he won't do it, and I'll end up doing it instead. <laughs> but at least no. uh, at least we'll have a challenge. We'll have something else out there. So there you go. Well, uh, I will have a lot more incentive to do the project if it's a patron that suggests it. See so. now 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 you're just getting technical. <laughs> now, uh, Nick, have, are are you are you a Patreon kind of person? I, uh, it's all new to me, to be honest with you. Mm. Yeah. It's to be honest. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty fantastic. Uh, it's, it's, it's helped this show out quite a bit and I'm sure it helps the VOD squad out quite a bit too. So I'm sure that's another, another patron uh, site you can go to is cruise on over to, uh, patreon.com and search for VOD squad. I'm sure there's something there for you. Yeah. Or, um, actually I don't know if the poodle does, uh, does VOD squad have one? I know poodle puncher has one. But well, then, then it's up to Poodle to make one for yeah. Bot Squad. I'm so, not, I'm yeah. not here to dictate shout, stuff. Shout it out! Like, <laughs> like, better make it happen. Cruise on over to you. You, you, you got to go over to Patreon.com, search for Bot Squad. If nothing comes up, then Poodle hasn't done his job. That's how that <laughs> is. I'm challenging everybody tonight. I don't care. Y'all, y'all so, got to get to work. Get some work done. So anyway, all right. So we've got our guest Nick Britton here, and we want to. Mm-hmm do a dive into what he's got going on, uh, the things that he has accomplished and uh, some goals of, of what he uh, wants to achieve, things like that. But before we dive into all of that, we want to spend 60 seconds to get to know him a little bit better. You've got 60 seconds. Get your mind right. right. It's time for hot takes on the ritual misery podcast. All right, Nick. So the way this game works is I'm going to give you a topic and then you are going to just say whatever comes to your mind. Uh, you can say one word, you can say 10 words, you can say, you can just go on a rant if you want. And then when you hear the record scratch, 
That is your your indication to stop talking and wait for your next topic. And we're going to go for about a minute. Are you ready? Yes. All right, Nick. Army drill instructors, am I right? Yes. Uh, crazy. Crazy intense. <laughs> Five-year-old know-it-alls, am I right? Yes. They, they, I think kids know more about this world than most adults do. Calm Florida weather, am I right? Doesn't exist. <laughs> it's a, it's, a, it's a global warming. It's all, it's, it's all made up. Doesn't exist. <laughs> Social media trolls, am I right? Oh yes, I uh, I get I get into I get into it with social media trolls. I truly believe there's no such thing as bad attention. I fr- I believe that with every fiber in my body. If I have people talking about me or my product, I'm doing something right. And I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Mm. And finally, the Ritual Misery podcast. Am I right? Yes, it's, uh, you know, veterans helping veterans, which is always an amazing thing. And that, right that on. like, like th- this is how you can tell he's got his shit together. He didn't go over time. He didn't ramble. He was very... <laughs> straight to the point. Like he, he had like 10 seconds left each, each time. It's only a 10 second challenge. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. Um, yeah. So Nick, uh, you, you mentioned veterans. Um, so you yourself are a veteran. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Your experience with the military? My, my experience with the military is, you know, I, uh, it's a touchy subject for me, to be honest with you. You know, I, I, I truly believe that Anyone who serves, you know, you guys, um, you know, are all heroes. Every single person who serves is is a hero. Anyone who at one point or another signs up to be in the military is a hero in my in in my personal opinion. I um I, I can't say I wasn't lucky enough, fortunate enough. I never went um, overseas, you know. So with that being said, I it's a touchy subject for me. Uh, you know, I have. A lot of a lot of friends who went overseas, a lot of friends who, um, you know, a lot of, you know, close friends who uh, didn't come back. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I it's it's my passion is to, to help people, to help veterans, help um, help each other. Uh, it's a huge, huge passion of me, of mine. Um, you know, it's a, it's one of those weird, weird subjects that it's deep to my heart, but deep down inside, I, I kind of don't like talking about, I'm sure. You, you know, I, I don't know how you guys feel about that. Oh yeah. No, I, I, yeah, we get it. It's so it's weird because when you're amongst just other people that are, that understand, it's like this calming thing to talk about and to kind of get it off your chest and, and remember people that you're, you know, that you're not going to see again or stories that you heard of, or, or of things that have gone on or your own personal experiences, even if they're not tragic, they're still, they, they still effective, you know, with a, a, a effective. Right. Um, but then in public, somebody asks you about it and it's like this immediate shell goes around you. And it's like, I'm not, mm-hmm. it's, it's either not my place or I'm not going to go down that with you. Or you, you're, I don't feel that you're going to understand regardless of how I try to express it. So there's really, I mean, and it's sad, but there's literally no point in me telling you about it because you can't, without having some experience in, in that scenario, you can't genuinely understand. And I mean, I feel that way. I've been, I've been overseas several times, but I mean, Ken's had mortars fired at him and I've never, never had mortars fired at me. So there's a certain level just between him and I, and we've known each other for damn near 30 years that I'm never going to fully understand his point of view on it because he's taking that, that extra level, you know, it's, it's just it's weird like that. Something that, that you, to... biggest... Oh, go ahead, Nick. I'm sorry. You know, the biggest thing to me is just, man, anytime you see the old school veterans, you know, the, the Vietnam hats and the, you know, the World War II hats and the Korean War hats, I always go up to those guys and thank them and talk to them. And, you know, they're dying. They're all over the place in South Florida. Uh, I was flying last week, uh, traveling around the country and they at, a, at one of the airports in D.C., they had an honor flight. And I went there, I shook all their guys' hands. And, and that's that's what the brotherhood is, the, um, the camaraderie, but you know, in the public spectrum, it's, you know, it's, it's a sensitive topic. Yeah. When I was, when I first came in the military, I used to 
it used to really make me feel weird when uh, complete strangers, like civilians, would come up to me and say, thank you for your service. It used to make me feel mm. really weird because part of me is like, you know, it's just my job. You know, I, I joined the military because I didn't want to go to college, <laughs> you know. Um, but there was also a part of me that was like, you know, you, you say those words, but how much do you mean them? Because you don't, you don't get really what you're saying. Um, but it, it took me a couple of years to, to realize that I need to appreciate them saying that, uh, because like what you were saying with the Vietnam veterans, they didn't get that when they were serving, they got spit on and called all kinds of terrible things. And we, uh, you know, serving in today's military, we are incredibly lucky to have the support of, of the community. And, um, you know, it, so it actually now is the complete opposite. So when I hear, thank you for your service, I thank them in return for, for their appreciation. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, so it's, I, I don't know. It's, it, I understand completely what you mean when you say it's a weird topic to discuss because it, it really is. Now you took yeah. that, your, your experience in, in the army, um, and you flipped it and kind of went the opposite direction in life. Like you, you became a, a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> yeah. Well, in my whole life, I knew my purpose was to, was to truly help people. You know, that, that is my purpose with everything I do in my life is to just be of service to other people. What that looked like, what that looks like, it changes constantly every single day you know, how I can help people changes, right? Before I thought I was in the military, which is an amazing way to help people. And then I thought I was being a teacher and that's a great way to help people. Then it was a special educator. Then it was an administrator. And now I, I, I try to think bigger. I try to think of, you know, a bigger spectrum and whatnot. And that has really come down to, uh, to my writing and my speaking. And I think, you know, you know how we're live on a video right now with people watching, it's such an amazing thing, a, a great way to just get, a message across. And my message that I want to get across is that everyone has the tools, you know, to truly live the life that they know they deserve to live. And I say that, you know, you know, you, you, one of you guys is out in Alaska, right? Mm -hmm. I lived in Vermont for about five years. I remember waking up one day and seeing the average temperature was negative seven degrees and understanding that you know, I didn't have to live that life if I didn't want to live that life. So I, I, uh, I took big steps and now, now I live in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, Amos and I both grew up in Indiana. Well, me, my whole life until I joined the military and then Amos for about half of his, uh, Indiana, like it, this is something that Amos and I differ on, um, it, temperature preference, uh, because I, Indiana was way too cold for me. Uh, it, it got hot and muggy in the summertime, uh, but the, the, you know, the snow is always awful and the like freezing temperatures, I hate it. And most of my military career, I've been stationed in warm places. Uh, the, the last of which took me here to New Mexico. And uh, even though I don't like the state of New Mexico and the city that I live in all that much, I do appreciate the weather here. Um, and Amos would be absolutely miserable living here oh, or yeah. or in south florida for that matter yeah there's no there's not a chance i was in south carolina for four years that's as far south as i ever wanted to be <laughs> um i there's I, I don't particularly like cutting the air with a butter knife just so i can breathe like it's, <laughs> it's just not something i enjoy um but my my younger years were all in southern california in the in the high desert so 10 to 20 percent humidity is like king you know, yeah, you can yeah. sweat and it's actually effective. Like, <laughs> yeah. And, and I get that in New Mexico, but the, the temperatures here are way higher than your threshold. Amos. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. Once it gets past like 80, 85, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to wilt, man. There's no, I can't do it. But the, the awkwardly enough, my highest temperature I've ever experienced in my life is 135 degrees in, you know, full IBA and everything else in, uh, in Kuwait. And the coldest I've ever experienced was here. It was negative 34 degrees last winter. And wow. I was still more comfortable at negative 34 degrees than I was at 135. That's... <clears throat> There's yeah, it's just crazy. no way. So, so I, that, that was the biggest thing with me is I, um, you know, 
my mid to late thirties, I saw a lot of people um, specifically get out of the military and not know what to do with their lives. Right. Yep. Not know what their next steps were. And they just assumed that they had to, you know, start a life where they lived their whole life. And, um, you know, I wanted to share that there's a better way to do that. Yeah. Uh, um, so you were talking about being an educator and, uh, how you like to, uh, you know, help people find their potential and, and things like that. Um, you're a writer. Did like that philosophy, like translate into, uh, what you wrote about? Yes. Well, first, uh, you know, full transparency, cause you know, I, I obviously can relate to you guys. I, um, I'm not a good writer whatsoever. And that's kind of very interesting to say, but I'm such a persistent person. Like, I, you know, I, I wrote and wrote and wrote and deleted and wrote, and it took me months, if not years to come up with something that, um, truly 100% I was, I was proud of growing up. I was always in special ed classes. I was always labeled slow or, or, you know, given learning disabilities and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I want, I wanted to help people. That's, I have a, my master's is actually in uh, special education and I wanted to constantly give back what was so truly freely given to me. Yeah. Very, very cool. Um, so tell us a little bit about your books. Uh, what are the names of the books and, uh, what, what do you cover in them? Yes, my uh, my my newest book is called Lessons from the Little Ones, and it kind of talk, talks about all of my past experiences, whether it was graduate school, undergraduate, um, you know, training, uh, everything, and how I learned more observing children um, than anything else. As crazy as it seems, as some people don't believe me, I truly learn more observing children than any drill instructor taught me. It's a sad, crazy thing to say, but you know, that's, that's my experience. Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely true in my, in my opinion as well, uh, because children are unfiltered. They, um, they tell you how they feel. They tell you what they observe, uh, without really much thought into, Hmm, how will this person perceive what I'm about to say? They just say it. Yeah. My, my uh yes my, one of my favorite quotes of all time and this is a little off topic but kind of goes into that that whole innocence and and unfilteredness i don't remember who said it but i heard it on a uh, an episode of criminal minds one of the first seasons it's that <clears throat> children don't need stories to tell them the dragons exists they know the dragons exists they need to know that they need the stories to tell them their dragons can be defeated Ah, uh, that's, <clears throat> that's an interesting that Yeah. Wow. And that, and that kind of goes along with that. You know, they, they go into the world so wide eyed and so ready to accept things and, and they just want to learn everything and that nothing is beyond the limits of their imagination mm-hmm. and their imagination is their knowledge They're It's one and the same. It doesn't, it doesn't differentiate between the two. Like if they believe a dragon, you know, if, if their imagination says there's a dragon behind the door, there's literally in their mind a dragon behind the door. There's no well, yeah, and there's, there's no cutoff switch. There's something magical about that. Uh, the the know the knowledge that they have that nothing is impossible. Mm. That's not an opinion that they have. That's knowledge that they have. You know, right? That's something that's, that we lose as we grow so up. So true. And I, and I studied a lot of highly successful people. You know, the celebrities, the A listers, millionaires, and um, they understand the importance of you know, their mind and, and truly, you know, visualizing something until it become real and reality, where somewhere along the way, we forget the power of our mind. It's such a, you know, like earlier, I said, I can't read fiction books, kind of hypocritical. Here I am. I can't even tr- train my imagination to read a fiction book. But as a child, you know, I can, I can do anything I wanted to do. Right, right. You you said in, in one of your interviews that the uh, the big difference is the determination, um, mm. the the drive and determination. That's like the big different differentiating factor between those who who succeed and those who don't. It's not the their natural talent or their book smarts. It's just the determination. And you know that's something that I see in my daughter all the time. She never gives up on shit. You know, <laughs> Autumn never gives up. She's she's not going to give up until she either gets her way 
or gets it done. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's really something that I look forward to. I come home every day just wondering what imagination she has brought forth into reality today. Yeah. Yeah. And that determination is such a beautiful thing. I consider myself a, a millennial, right? The dreaded millennials. Those, uh, the, we all know the stereotype with that. And with that being said, it's like, you know, there's, there's a better way. There's, there's, we don't have to fall into that stereotype of millennials of, um, you know, lazy people who disrespect America and would rather protest and all this stuff. There's, there's a better way to, uh, to do that and to, to live life. And uh, the great thing about that is we all tapped into that while we were children. You know, while we were little kids, we learned how to walk. We learned how to talk. You know, we weren't born this way. We learned and we didn't give up. And this is how we are now. Yeah. So I've got another story uh, about uh, one of my kids. He grew up, well, both of my kids actually grew up as military brats. They, they grew up in the you know, military community, going to military schools and, uh, th- well, not military schools, but uh, the de- department of defense, uh, dependent schools. DLD, yeah. Yeah. Dogs. And, um, yeah. And, um, you know, so they grew up in an environment that's, uh, very much, very different than, than most public schools. I think, um, Dodd schools are more like private schools where you don't have nearly the, uh, you know, problem with violence and, and, um, you know, things like that. So I, I guess kind of privileged, I guess. Uh, in that it's sense, a, it's a it's a, a a controlled populace. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so one of the things that really struck me early on, um, my oldest son Lucas was, I believe, five. He was either five or six years old, so he was he was either kindergarten or or first grade, I think. And he came home really upset one day. Uh, one of his friends. Uh, one of his friends was, was a different race. I think, I think the kid might've been black and, um, he came home one day really upset and said that for some reason, uh, the other kids were making fun of his friend and he didn't understand why. And he told us some of the, the words that the other children were using, uh, against this kid. And, uh, it was racial and we had to, his mom and I had to explain to him what racism was. And it was a completely foreign concept to him. He had, he didn't understand it. Like we had to explain it to him a couple of different ways, like so that he would, you know, as a five or six year old, like, you know, try to get his head around it. And when, when he, when it finally clicked with him, he just started crying at like the, the injustice of it, the, you know, how unfair that is. And I started crying, like watching this take place because it's so, it's so pure And racism and hatred and things like that are things that they learn from watching grownups do it. Mm-hmm. It's not something that is in them from the beginning or in any of us from the beginning. We have to be taught hate. Squid in the chat room mm-hmm. says, uh, quit destroying my heroes. And, uh, He's he's one of those that, that served in the military for a time. So, kudos to him. Um, oh, yeah. I think they're talking about Santa he, Claus. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look, you 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 do Santa Claus however you want to do Santa Claus. That's all I'm saying about that. Uh, I'm, I'm not here to judge your Santa Claus, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, now, this is not your first book, though, right? You've got a uh, uh, children no success. Do you? Yeah. Yes, that was my uh, my first book I wrote. And honestly, I, I was young and I had no idea what I was doing. And I just wrote a book and I, and I published it. And um, it was very factual, very um, probably military-like, kind of like a, you know, like a field manual, A, B, C, D, E, that this is what you're supposed to do. Um, and there was no stories with that. And apparently uh, in my topic, in my, you know, my following of parents and, and whatnot, because my my following is unique because I, I can tap into the military. I can tap, tap into the athletic, but then I had the, you know, the moms and the dads and they, they wanted a story. So that first book was like very, um, very short and to the point. And I, and I personally love it. I love books like that with no BS, no fluff in it. Um, 
But then, I, you know, I, I took some advice and I came out with the second. The most recent one ha- is very similar in topic, but has stories with that. Hmm. That's that's awesome. I mean, I I I wish I could write a book. I wish I had the attention span to li- just sit down, put my thoughts down, and and make them make sense to someone other than myself, which is kind of like the the hard part of the deal, right? Uh, <laughs> was your approach so, was your approach to writing these books more of a uh, I'm going to sit down, you know, I have an idea, and I'm going to sit down and write what I know. Or was it more, I have an idea of what I want to say. Now let me go research it and uh, write fr- basically from the research. Or was it a mix of those? It, it was a mix. Of, you know, first and foremost, it was emotion. And then uh, it was that not quit mentality. You know, I started writing it honestly. And then halfway through, I'm like, I don't want to do this. And then, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be that. I, I, I've never started something in my life and not finished it. Right. That's. That's, I don't think you guys are like that either. You know, I I have to finish everything I started. I've started so a, really I started a pizza and not from. finished it. What's that? I said I've started a pizza and not finished it. Does that count? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I struggle with that too. But um, so that's where it first came from was that uh that mentality that I was going to you know complete this book and then I did it and and I had you know you said social media trolls. I was creating controversy. I was creating a buzz about this idea. I was having people talk saying I was wrong and some people telling me I was right and they were arguing about the book. And I realized anytime you can tap into someone's emotion, whether it's positive or negative, you know, that that's really all I want to do. I want to, I want to get people to think and, and to observe and to maybe just view this world a little differently. So that's where I came out with the second book and absolutely pound social media to the point where, you know, people are getting in fights over me on Facebook forums and I'm just sitting there laughing about it when they're all buying my book. Right. Um, (laughs) That's really my goal. It's really my goal is just to, you know, have people just observe this world around them a little differently. Yeah. That's a, that's a powerful thing when you can influence people's emotions. Uh, and, and, Mm. and especially when you can change the, maybe the way that they see a thing uh, is pretty powerful. I dig it. I'm all about it. Um, I, one of my favorite people in the entire world, if not my favorite person in the whole world is my four year old. And there's a reason for that. You know, it's just, it's, you, you can, you can sit down and, and she'll tell you, daddy, you made me angry. <laughs> like, okay. You know, how, why, why, how did I make you angry? She, cause, cause I didn't get a popsicle. Okay, well, you know, uh, uh, I understand, but you you didn't eat your dinner, so maybe we can try again tomorrow night. And then two seconds later, she's like, "I love you, Daddy." And I'm like, <laughs> "What is wrong with the entirety of the rest of the world?" <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, Autumn is amazing, man. Like that's yeah, I absolutely understand your your love and admiration for that girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um. So be, before we uh, before we move on to other topics, Nick, uh, it, we we have we don't we don't have a huge audience, but we have a, a small and uh, an understanding audience. So before before we move on to something else, what do you what do you want them to know about your books? That is just like this is why everyone should be reading these, not just not just dads or or people that don't have kids yet or or whatever else. Why why is it? What are they going to get out of it? Uh, that, that they should just go out there right now and get this book. Yes. And most importantly, you know, I, I don't have children yet. Right. So this book is written for people who just want to, you know, achieve more with their life. Maybe they they want to that promotion. They want to quit their job and, and become an entrepreneur. Maybe they want to become a better parent. But this book is just written for people who want more. Very short. It's very to the point, and I think it's so informative, it's just going to challenge um, the way you think. And to me, anytime you know I can be a, a little bit challenged on the way I think, I'm intrigued by it. So, you know, don't be, you know, you have a very military friendly uh, following. You know, this book is written for people who want to achieve more in their life, whatever that looks like. Very cool. You know, this book. 
I, I printed out thousands of copies of Children No Success, and you know they were all over Afghanistan, you know, in care packages to all my friends and and whatnot. Um, you know, I, I've had feedback across the world, but it's it's truly for people who just want, who know they deserve more and want more in their life, and I think that's that's everyone. Yeah, wh- where would people go if they want to learn more about your books or even purchase it, purchase them? Yes. I- Obviously, Amazon's ruling the world right now at a crazy amount. So um, it seems like Amazon's the best place to go. But, you know, the book is available, you know, on Barnes & Noble. If if people still go there, I believe you can get it at Barnes & Noble still. You know, iBooks, all of those apps. But I I think Amazon, uh, just search my name, Nick Britton, is going to show up. And there's a lot of reviews there. Some of them are they're either five-star reviews or one- or two-star reviews. And uh, (laughs) And I love that. I love that. You know, that that's that, that's exciting to me. So, you know, I think we could all agree. Amazon is just the stuff they're doing is mind blowing. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. We'll be sure to put links to your books in our show notes uh, so that uh, our uh, audio listeners will be able to, to snag those pretty easy. So uh, hopefully we can kick a, a few people to you. Speaking of things that, uh, that, that are amazing and change people's world. Gravity Falls. You uh, you, you just recently finished Gravity Falls. Yeah, so I, a couple of months ago, I guess, I mentioned Gravity Falls. It's a cartoon uh, that was put out by Disney a few years ago. And uh, we came across it. Uh, we, we like to, um, as a family, we like to sit down and, you know, pick a, a show that we watch, uh, you know, a couple, at least a couple of times during the week and that we'll watch as a family. And... Um, yeah, so Gravity Falls, it's only two seasons long. So altogether, it's like, it's it's less than 50 episodes altogether. Right. Um, this show is fun right out of the gate. Um, it's got, you know, it's kid-friendly enough, but it's also got stuff in there for the adults. Like, nothing dirty, really, but things that, like, you, you need to have lived a little bit to to understand the joke, I guess. So there's something yeah. in there for everyone. Uh, but it's a great sense of adventure. Um, it, the show kind of starts out as a, uh, like a monster of the week kind of like standard format. But right. what they're doing is building like basically world building and also dropping clues. Uh, mm-hmm. like every episode has clues for what's to come in the future. And the way that this thing wraps up, the end of season two is just it is spot on it's uh in my opinion it is a home run and man i tell you what it, it it's on hulu if you guys have hulu and you have not seen gravity falls i highly encourage you guys just go check it out it doesn't matter if you 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 want to watch something with your family you want to watch something by yourself uh either way i think it's a it, it was hella entertaining and yes i did so- use the word hella <laughs> Gravity Falls reminds me a little bit, um, at least in their humor, of Rugrats. If you were a a ten year old watching Rugrats, it's just a cartoon about babies. It's kind of dumb, and <laughs> you know you, you you can get your laughs out of it. It's got some funny scenarios, things like that. But if you're a thirty year old or a forty year old watching Rugrats, it is hilarious <laughs> right. because like half of the jokes in in the show are adult oriented, and it's just innuendo that you're not going to understand as as a younger kid um and i mean a lot of cartoons are like that but uh, rugrats comes to mind because I, I believe madison was downstairs watching that the other day laughing 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 it <laughs> came out and she's like i finally get all these stupid jokes I'm like yeah, yeah exactly exactly right, yeah. um you know she's 15 so she you know she's just now going through and she's watching with the babies and the babies were like you know the four-year-old and two-year-old like whatever yeah they're but, laughing you know, at the, the laughing. slapstick elements and things while <clears throat> while madison's yeah, actually yeah. getting the jokes yeah um Ashley actually got me into uh, into Gravity Falls, and I haven't finished it yet because I've I've seen probably 30, 35 of the episodes just sporadically. But I I would love to just sit down and just watch it from front to be, front to end. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Nick, have you ever seen Gravity Falls? Are you much of a no. uh, strange cartoon kind of guy? No, but I just wrote it down to look look at tomorrow. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty it's good. Just made my note. Um, yeah. another one that reminds me of is Phineas and Ferb because on that show, yes. like half the jokes are innuendo and that show is hilarious. Yes. Yes. I, I, in fact, I think gravity falls is, is more similar to Phineas and Ferb than it is to Rugrats even. 
Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's probably. a good that's I mean, a good comparison actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's just hilarious. <laughs> um something I wanted to mention though, Kent, you don't do betas. Um as far as like OSs and uh most software uh right. yeah, I uh no, I tend to stay away from the betas because uh, two reasons. One, I'm not going to be much of a uh, a beta tester as far as like providing feedback. Um mm-hmm. I feel like I don't have time for that. And second, like, uh, you know, I've got patience. I will wait for the, you know, for the release version to come out. Um, uh, in particular, I, I think you're referring to Apple's new OS, uh, iOS 11. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. You've been beta testing this thing for several months now, right? Yeah, from the very beginning, from like day two of uh, developer develop yeah. <laughs> developer release. Right. And so the full version actually was released yesterday. And I'm curious, what are your thoughts about, um, I guess the difference between the latest beta and full release and also like kind of where it started in the beginning days of beta to now, like what, what's the differences? Okay. In- so a quick rundown, uh, Nick, are you an iOS guy or an Android guy? Android. Ah, uh, see, so you're gonna laugh when I say <laughs> half of this, <laughs> right? Um, it, <clears throat> in the beginning, there were so, so my first beta experience was beta seven, and or uh, uh, iOS seven beta three or something like that, and it was it was like all all the time it was just complete crap. It was just every time you go through, it was just crap. Um, lots of glitches, lots of hanging ups, everything else iOS 11 from the very beginning was stable. There were, uh, same with watch OS, uh, four and everything else. They were, they were just stable. They worked. The only problems I ever had were with Bluetooth connectivity, uh, once in a while. And all the features were pretty much already there. Like from the get go, it's been just fine tuning this entire process. And I think iOS 11, first of all, it's pretty good on the phone. Um, it's amazing on the iPad. The control center is amazing. If, if, if the control center finally brings it on par with Android, um, the, the file uh, transfers and everything else, like the, the file directory system mm-hmm. finally brings it on par with Android and the way that it ties in with the iOS and even windows. Cause you can do- get the iCloud client for windows and you can transfer files between your windows machine and your iPad and your phone. It's it's really awesome, and now that they have the two terabyte for ten dollars a month family plan thing for iCloud, yeah, like ten bucks you get two terabytes of it, everybody gets to share the two terabytes, but you get your own private space within that two terabytes, and you can have literally any files, anything, any pictures on your on your phone with you all the time, and it, uh, I think it's it's great. It's better than Dropbox even. Yeah, you know, and I got a I got a comment real quick on the. Um the, the uh, iOS 11 features for the iPad. Uh, so a while back, uh, right a- I think it was right after the iPad Pro came out. Uh, when mm-hmm. when was that? Was that last year or the year before? Uh, last year. Last year, yeah. So it was probably about, last year. about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Uh, I was in the market for a new laptop. And I ended up getting a MacBook Pro. But the uh, two of the things that were on my list of things to look at were the, um, Oh shit. I'm drawing a blank now. What's the, um, what's the tablet that Microsoft put out the, um, surface. Yes. The surface pro. Um, (laughs) yeah. So the surface pro, I was like really super interested in that. And when the iPad pro came out, I was real interested in that. But the problem, the reason that I didn't choose either one of those is that one, the surface pro had windows on it and I'm trying to avoid windows. If I can, my problem with the iPad pro is that it has iOS without the app, the, without the option of putting Mac OS on it. Um, right. I felt like because I wanted to use it more as a laptop than as a uh, tablet. You know, tablet, like you basically like a giant iPhone. Um, I wanted to use it more like a laptop, which means that I would prefer the Mac OS or was it Mac OS then or was it still OS 10? Either way, the full desktop version of the OS is what I was wanting. And I think iOS 11 is bringing that desktop experience, uh, maybe if not completely, it's, it's very close to what I was hoping to have uh, in an iPad Pro. So I think if I could rewind 
this release a year ago, mm-hmm. I there's a good chance that I would have had an iPad Pro instead of a MacBook Pro. Um, I would. I would oh, hmm. <sighs> I, I before iOS 11, I'd put the MacBook Pro as a 40% laptop replacement. Yeah. With iOS 11 in full swing, I would give the uh, iPad Pro in a 70%. Yeah, and that's probably close enough for me that I that I yeah. It's just would. your hardcore programs that you wouldn't be able to run. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and we just lost Nick. Oh, hopefully we can get him back. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, all right. So <laughs> let's move on from the um, from the Apple talk. He was probably yeah. Nick was probably like uh, yeah. This is too much Apple crap for me. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> well, he uh, he he had turned his device right before that. So I think maybe uh, maybe he had a different call or something going in. Um, it is time, however, for this. <laughs> So Nick, Sam Burns, my philosophy for a happy life. Yeah. So Nick put this in here as a as our suggested TED talk for the week, and mm. um, hopefully he will come back on so that we can hear his thoughts. Uh, this is a this is a talk that I've actually seen before. I think this is probably like, actually like the fourth or fifth time that I've watched this one. Um, mm. For you, for you guys that are not familiar with Sam Burns, um, a lot of you might be if you saw him. Okay, uh, okay. Don't First of all, if you're not familiar with Sam Burns, welcome to the internet. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Sam Burns was always very inspirational to me because he he had an uh, he had a genetic disorder, um, which it's gave a him a protein disorder or whatever. Right. Um, his cells didn't develop properly, and. Um, it affected his appearance. It affected his, uh, his strength and a lot of his, his physical constitution. Yeah. yeah. He was sick a lot, things like that. Uh, but his outlook on life was very, I would say inspirational because he was the kind of guy that, uh, was very much can do. It's not, mm-hmm. uh, you know, woe is me because I can't do this thing. He would say, that looks like something I want to do. How can I do it? And that's how he approached right. things. And um, unfortunately, uh, he was 17 years old. Unfortunately, like within weeks, I think, of the release of this TED Talk, he actually passed away. Hmm. Um, I did not know that. Yeah. Um, so it was very unfortunate. Uh, the world lost a, a, a bright light uh, when Sam Burns passed away. But we are left with his, uh, you know, his legacy. We are able to still draw inspiration from his talk. Uh, there's a documentary out there about his life. Uh, really, really good stuff. Uh, I, I hate to hog all the time to dis- on discussing this, but uh, I, I love this TED Talk. It's, it's very powerful to me. And I'll probably end up watching it a, a dozen more times. Um, what 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 were your thoughts? What were your takeaways? So, I'd never actually seen this one before, um, but I, I was m- familiar with the with the individual because of the story and because of you know the internet, right? Um, and, and the you know the disease or the condition or whatever you want to call it. And I I thought it was it, it was it was an interesting talk to watch. Um, I I just I I don't I don't know if I really got a whole lot out of it. But it was mostly because it, it kind of just fulfilled my expectations. As soon as I went into this, yeah, this is exactly what I expected. Right. So yeah, um, I mean, it was it was nice to watch, but it was like I said, it just it, there was no there were no surprises. There was no right, big reveal right. or anything at the end. Well, so. and that's yeah. I guess I wasn't looking for a surprise because you know I, I'm familiar with the guy, and like I said, I've seen this talk before, and it's but I'll still watch it. Like I'll. I'll I might watch it again tonight. Like it's just that good. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, if you guys want a little pick me up, a little um, uh, inspiration, and you've got what is it, twelve minutes long or something like that? If you got twelve minutes yeah, to spare, it's, uh, it's not a really long. Yeah, check it out. It's it's Sam Burns, uh, B E R N S. Sam Burns. 
my philosophy for a happy life. Just go go look it up on TED.com or on YouTube and uh, just check it out. I th- This is uh, two thumbs way up from me on this one. Yep. Um, so hopefully um, Nick will come back on. We can hear what, what he wanted to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, we have just over three months, man. Of 2016. Of 2017. Or yeah, or that. That's how fast <laughs> this year has gone, man. I'm still writing 2016 on my checks. Just kidding. I can't remember the last time I wrote a check. <laughs> I was going to say, you're still writing checks? What do you think? It's 86? I what, know. What's going on right now? Dude, I, I think it's seriously been like four years or something since I've written a check. I don't even know where my oh, checkbook man. is. If I even still have any. I don't. I, I have no idea. Ah, oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> Poodle Punch says, what's a check? Um, <laughs> but we have just over three months until we get to the uh, New Year's Eve streamathon. Yes. Yes. I'm starting to get excited, man. I, this is one of those things that like, okay, I know it's coming up, you know, here in a couple of months, I might have to start doing some planning, but man, this year is flying by so much. We are literally three months away from this thing taking yep. off and it's time, man. It is time for people to start volunteering for this. Uh, we have Christy Cates locked in already, uh, yep. but the official launch, I'm going to go ahead and announce it now. The official launch for the signups and everything is going to be next week. Um, I think we're going to try to get something into diamond time for next week. Okay. And then the like, no kidding. Uh, uh, you know what? I'll say diamond time is going to be the soft launch. We will have the, uh, uh, the form out there on the internet that people can fill out, uh, sign up for the streamathon If they want to volunteer to stream, if they want to do, you know, volunteer to do some of the, the back end uh, behind the scenes type stuff. Um, advertise for us, any anything like that. Contribute, uh, contribute art, uh, Ooh, anything. We got to make a, we got to make a press package. Yes, yes. So to that's spread around to all the other uh, Diamond Club um, shows to get yes, that out there. So absolutely, yeah. and all of that. So, like I said, the soft launch will be most likely uh, Diamond Time for uh, this upcoming Tuesday on Nine Attack, and then the like. No kidding, like hard launch will be one week from today. I think mm. we will um, like start like seriously pushing this out there uh, for volunteers and also just to publicize it. So the people know that it's actually, um, you know, something that, that they can enjoy on, uh, on uh, December 31st and January 1st. Yep. Uh, you know, what's crazy is last year we waited until the middle of November to plan this for the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> every, every year. So the first year it was, I'm going to do it. Uh, I, I said on Sunday that I was going to do it on like Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. It was the first year. Yeah. Uh, the next year we said in you know, earlier than that, but we actually started getting people ready in mid November for a, for a new year's Eve event. And well, this year we started in like July, <laughs> yeah. but we actually haven't gotten anything done until, Oh, it's middle of September now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, it already feels like we're so far behind the eight ball. Oh yeah. No kidding. No kidding. Uh, thank God that we've got um, a lot of the like preliminary work done because we've got uh, we're going to borrow heavily, I think, from the materials that we produced last year um, and a lot of the contacts and things like that that we uh, got done last year. But it's still I would say it's it, it it's going to be probably at least 60 to 70 percent of the workload still uh, that we didn't, yeah. ha- you know, compared to what we had last year so. Um, it's going to be great, man. I, I am so looking forward to it. A lot of people have already expressed interest in this. Uh, like I said, Christy Cates is already like, uh, you know, she's inked in, uh, she's not penciled in. She is firm. Uh, but we've got yeah. a lot of people that, um, that we already know that, uh, we're, you know, we're going to get back to them or they're going to get back to us, uh, to get firm. And, uh, and this year I can't make any promises, but I do not have a surgery scheduled two days before the, uh, before the stream this year. So <laughs> that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. <laughs> no dipping out and then, uh, and vomiting while I, while I suck down some Vicodins. Uh, <laughs> um, right. yeah. I mean, unless you just want to do that for fun, I guess. Uh, no, I know. <laughs> yeah. mm. Oh man. Um, no. but yeah, as so much, as much pain as I was in last year, I decided not to take the rest of my pills after that. So, <laughs> um, so All yeah, that being so said, man, um, what else we got going on? We got some, uh, some other stuff going on. We, what do we got coming up? Like what, what, you t- what, what, 
What's going on with this podcast? What what what, what are we doing here? Words, 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 man. So so, do you want to announce our guest for next week? No, nope. That's that's still a secret. Oh yeah. Or is it even a <laughs> is it even a firm guest? <laughs> oh no no, it is it is it's, it's locked in. <laughs> okay okay, it's it's locked in. Like the 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 individual in, our our guest next week is actually taking the afternoon off in order to make sure they are ready. Okay. Okay. Well, very cool. All right. So everyone look forward to that. It's it, Yeah. All right. That's, that's all we'll say about that. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've got a um, lot of it, it. It is episode 143. That is your only hint. Yeah. And that, I know who the guest is and I still don't understand the clue. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, even better, even better. Um, yeah, man, we we've got some some real interesting guests coming up. Uh, I don't know how much we want to reveal of the schedule. All uh, of them are locked in, I believe. So we have our mystery guest next week. The week after that, episode one forty four should be the first week of October. Yep. And we we were gonna have Mike TV and Christy Cates on that show, but it didn't work out for Mike TV's schedule. Um, so we, I don't, I don't think we have anybody else planned for that week, but I'm working on it. Yeah. I'm not sure if we've got that booked up yet or not, but Christy and Mike will be on, but not till a couple of weeks later. Uh, the 19th, uh, yeah, I, think? I think three weeks after that now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but the, we're going to have both of them on at the same, on the same show. So that's mm-hmm. going to be awesome. That's going to be amazing. Um, also dude. a technical challenge for me to figure out how to get that many streams on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then who we, who do we have on the twelfth of October? That I believe is Snubs, right? Is it for is the twelfth? I, I think I, I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah, man. Um, this this makes good radio right here. This it does. Really yeah, it does. And I and I apologize. Yeah, let's I'm all, to bring let's up a... just look through our calendar here and see <laughs> if we can figure out who the hell we be booked you know what? on I, the I, show. I tell you what. I tell you what. We've got just trust us. We've got some really cool guests coming up. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> um, st- tune in next week for the mystery guest, and then n- next week we will we will announce for sure the guest that's going to be on the following week. Uh, no, you know we've got I could, some really do? I cool could stuff just actually up. like look at my calendar because it's kind of. That's a thing. Uh, <laughs> it's, it is. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, another thing that we've got going on is iTunes reviews. Uh, speaking mm. of the episode that Snubs is going to be on, uh, that is our three-year anniversary stream. And mm-hmm. we're going to do a few special things. And one of the things that we intend to do is read our shitty five-star reviews. Yep. Uh, we've been no, 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 no. You, you said it wrong. Oh, you sorry. Five-star shitty reviews. There you go. <laughs> So you guys need to get those in now. Go to iTunes, look us up, the Ritual Misery Podcast, and give us a five star review. But but tell us how awful the show is. Uh, the five stars is what's going to um, get our podcast noticed, uh, possibly. <laughs> but the the fun of it is the review. Uh, nobody nobody cares what the reviews say. They don't mean anything but we are going to use the narratives that you guys type up to uh, basically make comedy for our, ourselves here on the show. Yeah. I mean, so, get, so tell us how awful we are. Uh, look at the ones that are already there. Maybe get some inspiration. Try to try to top them, try to put a shittier review, uh, but be sure you give us five stars and we will read those on our three year anniversary show. Looking forward to doing that. And, and yes, I can confirm October 12th is that three year anniversary show. It is uh, with snubs and the following week on the 19th is Christy Cates and Mike TV. Yep. So that is what we have. We still, we are still currently open on the fifth, although I don't see that lasting very much longer because I got two people in the wings. Okay. Yeah. As do I. So we're going to have to get together make sure we don't double book. <laughs> There's only one, there's only one real calendar. It's the one that I use, not you. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. So lots of cool stuff coming up. Um, hey, um, now is a good time to mention that people can find us on Twitch now. So cruise on over to twitch.tv slash ritual misery podcast. Yep. All one word. Yep. Uh, twitch.tv slash ritual misery podcast. That's where we are streaming. We are still streaming on the YouTube channel. Hopefully we get affiliated soon and we won't be able to do it on the YouTube channel until the day after. So I wouldn't stick that out too much. We do need all the support we can get though. We want to try to beat VOD squad because yep. uh, VOD squad, uh, they, they, they challenged us and we, we can't have that. So 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, be sure that uh, if you're not following us on Twitch or on YouTube, like if you watch us on one or the other, or maybe you're just listening to the audio, uh, at least go there. Uh, go to YouTube. Go to Twitch. Follow us on both of those platforms. Uh, help us build the audience. Get us noticed. Um, the, all any of those things would help us out. Uh, I know we always talk about Patreon, but the the uh, things that will help us out probably just as much will be just spreading the word about ritual. Misery. Yeah. Speaking of Patreon, uh, we still need some uh, some suggestions for Kent's um, oh, yes. Kent's activity, the challenge for Kent. That's right. I'm actually I'm I'm Patreon actually really exclusive. looking forward to seeing what people come up with that. Uh, for because I, unless it's illegal or incredibly like expensive or just ridiculous, uh, I, I'm probably gonna do it. So uh, don't don't be afraid to get silly with it. Uh, just don't don't be like extreme with it. I get I don't know I don't know. Use your best you use your best judgment. You know what? Get extreme with it, and I have I reserve the right to say I ain't doing it. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but anyway, so. Hey, uh, unfortunately, Nick was not able to come back onto the stream, but I do want to make sure that we get his stuff out there. Yep. Uh, if you guys are interested in what he's got going on, you can get him on Twitter. It's at NJ Britton. That's N J B R I T T O N. That's on Twitter. Um, you can also go to nickbritton.com, N I C K B R I T T O N, nickbritton.com. That's going to have links to all of his stuff there. Um, and like he told you guys, go to Amazon, uh, just look him up and find his books there. Uh, they're not, they're not very expensive. I'm sure they're, they're going to be an excellent read for you guys. So go check that out. Uh, as far as I go, I am on Twitter at RM underscore Del Noche, but I'm Del Noche pretty much everywhere else on the internet, except for, except well, for except for Twitch, which I just realized tonight. I'm Del Noche 77 for some reason. Uh, but just about anywhere else on the internet is Del Noche. Um, especially if you are a beer lover like me, uh, you better add me on untapped so that we can check out what, what, uh, beers we're getting into. What about you, Amos? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. You can find the show on, on Twitter at ritual misery, and, uh, you can submit ideas in our subreddit, uh, ritual misery. Reddit.com. So that's all that. Hey, um, I want to mention real quick, man. Undaunted is kicking ass. I had another great guest this week and you can find that at ritual misery.com as well. Yep. Um, I, I'm, I'm might be getting to the point to maybe break that one out a little bit. Uh, got some, got some pretty amazing people lined up. That is awesome. So dude. that show. Um, oh, and by the way, I'm going to be retired soon because they're mid boarding me. Uh, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's semi official. Now my commander's recommendation came back to, to retire me a little early. So if that's the case, I'll be looking for work, uh, freelance, uh, uh, stuff. Uh, if, if you've got some audio to, uh, to get edited or some video you need, you need trimmed down or something like that. Let me know. Hook me up. Um, I, my, I got, I got good rates. It's only like $380 an hour. That's it. Um, <laughs> is that too much? Uh, maybe am, I, a little. am I overselling? I bet you can negotiate. I bet if you yeah. emailed Amos or uh, DM him on Twitter, I bet he would negotiate that price. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out if you got some, if you got some stay at home, dad work shit to do. Let me know. And uh, once again, don't forget to cruise on over to VOD Squad. Uh, Patreon.com. Uh, just search for VOD Squad, and Poodle Punch is going to make something happen over there because because we, we're, we're, we're <laughs> it's part of the challenge. Like, you can't challenge us to, to stuff and then and then not, you know, not put up. So, yep. <laughs> um, and, of course, you can find all of our links to everything we talk about. It's, it's either in the show notes or on the site or something like that. Cruise on over to RitualMisery.com. And R I T U A L M I S E R Y. Yes, there's there, there's a reason. There's there's three 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 because I have with threes and fours. But whatever, go make do. Uh, and podcast has uh, has seven letters, which is a combination of three and four. I'm just rambling now. I'm just trying to kill time because we haven't quite hit our four hour mark yet. So I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> um, while we're just rambling, I want to go ahead and. Uh, thank Jotmon for maintaining our DCTV PDF page. Um, mm-hmm. That is so much appreciated, man. It was actually a dream come true when that thing materialized. Um, yep. Thank you, Jotmon, for uh, not only creating that, but also maintaining it. Uh, good stuff. And I think that's it, man. I think it's time to uh, to hit the button and thank Kevin McLeod, last week's guest, for uh, <laughs> for the amazing music. Yes, Uh yeah, Kevin McLeod, uh, yeah, check out his stuff, incompetech.com. He's got all kinds of 
of uh, music that you can use for free. So check it out. And uh, love you guys. See ya. you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>